a portable DVD player with some pretty cool tricks up its sleeve. Let's check it out. Dave Taylor here, and I have to admit, I do a lot of streaming, I have a media server, but I also have a ton of DVDs. And there are times when I just wanna go back to my original laser media and just play a DVD. Now, I can do that on my TV with my DVD player, but if I'm on the road, or if I'm in the car, or if I'm on a train or something, then the choices become considerably more limited because modern laptops no longer have optical players. Enter this. This is the Navisk Auto 15.6 inch portable DVD player. And as you can see, it's actually playing a DVD right now. So in fact, let me go ahead and just push the button on the front and you can see the DVD spinning in the drive. And I will close it again to get it to spin back up and it's actually really pretty straightforward to use. So you can see there are big, big controls on the front surface. A cool feature is that you can actually spin it. So you can do this, for example, whoops, going the wrong way. Let's go in the other direction. And I can spin it all the way around. So like this, I'm now able to watch it in a better ergonomic design, but I can also tilt it back so I can watch it this way. And as all this is happening, there we go. The DVD is playing and it is advancing. So I'm on the DVD menu for The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, <laughs> one of those boxes over there. And it is honestly a favorite of mine, but it also makes for a great demo. Now, one of the other cool things this can do is that it has a remote control and I'm going to have to see what's on screen. So let me just show you super quick. I can choose modes. There we go. Let's see. Mode. And I can switch because I also have my computer plugged in via HDMI. So you can see I'm using this as a second monitor on my MacBook by just having an HDMI wire coming on, which is super convenient too, because through this, I could then stream something like Netflix or Apple TV or Peacock or Hulu on my computer, having it on this display. So now I have that second display, but now I'm also accessing a whole lot of other media. Now, let me switch back to the DVD and let's see, one of those is gonna do it. There we go. So now I'll get back to the DVD. And while that's happening, let me just turn it here, it's muted, but let me also point out that if I actually unmute it with the remote control, then it will give us music because there is music during that DVD menu. Now, while all this is happening, and it's not the most fast device in the world, as you can tell, there's our music. Okay, so let's just listen for a second. So, takes a little while to get to the right spot on the DVD. This is sort of the nature of DVDs, which is why streaming is such a nice delight nowadays. Everything's just instantaneous. There we go. So there's my music, but I don't have the license rights to play this, so I'm actually gonna mute it again. But suffice to say, it does have audio. Now, it's a 1600 by 900 resolution, which means it's not quite HD because HD would have the vertical of 1080 versus 1920. So it's not HD, but it's definitely as good as an older television. And you could see the rotation. You can rotate it 270 degrees and you can do that 180 degree flip. If I want to do it like this and just have it sitting on my lap, I can do that or I could just tilt it back up and stereo speakers. It has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which gives you somewhere between one and two movies in actual use. And then the controls, let me spin this back around and I suspect I'm not the only one who has to try to figure out which way is the full spin. So if I spin this all around, then you can see there are a lot of buttons on the front and they're really big. 
which makes it really easy to work with. If your grandpa really wants to watch some of those old war movies or something, then he's going to be able to handle this even if he has poor eyesight. And it gets plenty loud, so it's really a personal audio and video environment for him. And the controls, there's a lot of like toggles and buttons where one side does one thing, the other side does the other. In the center is the actual DVD player. And I should point out that it is a region-free DVD player. So if you pick up some DVDs from Japan or from Germany on your last trip there, or even from Africa or India, then all of them should work with this device. It also reads and displays CDR, CDRW, DVDR, DVDRW. So all these different formats where you can actually burn your own DVDs. If you have those from like the old days when you had an optical drive, or if you're still burning these, then this will work with all of them. Now, what's really cool is it has lots of other inputs too. So let me give you a close up of the side where all the plugs are. Left to right, you can see there's a USB you could put in a thumb drive, for example. There is audio out, 3.5 millimeter, and that's perfect if you want to use headphones. And then there's AV out, and I'll show you that cable in just a moment. There's a micro SD or TF drive, and then HDMI. There's an on-off switch so you can make sure it doesn't accidentally turn on if you don't want it to turn on. And finally, there's that power. And it comes with a couple of different ways to power it. So one way is you can just plug it into a regular outlet. So that's what I have here. And notice it didn't die because battery, right? So I can plug it into power and that works easily. But it also includes a, um, what is this, 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter. I know they don't call them cigarette lighters anymore, but in your car, you probably still have one of these somewhere and you can use that to power this device. Now, that can be a game changer if you have kids and you just have an older car or you didn't spring for the built-in displays on the back of the car seats or something, which tends to be like $3,000. This is considerably less expensive. And if they're halfway through the movie, they can bring it in to the hotel and watch the rest of it. So that's pretty nice. Now, it also comes with this AV cable. And this gives you the ability to plug into that AV port, which I showed you on the side. And then you have left and right audio and video. Sorry, left and right audio and video. So on older televisions, you can plug those in as what they call an AV or RCA input, and this will give you the ability to push the screen signal onto a different screen. That's a pretty nice little trick. Now, the remote control has a ton of buttons and features, and one of the ones that I find really useful is Zoom. So let's just jump into this movie for a minute. And again, I have to be careful because I don't have the rights to broadcast the film. So we'll just do it in very quick little snippets. So let's see if we can get to, let's see, where are we up? Oh, here we go. So we'll go here and then we'll go here. And so now here's the scene we're at. And again, I'm, I've muted the audio, but notice that it's letterboxed. If you don't like letterbox, one of the features on the remote is zoom. So you can zoom 2x, you can zoom 3x, you can zoom 4x to get much more on the screen, or you can go and actually say, I really want to see everything on the sides too, because that's what the filmmaker intended. And you can even go smaller than that. So you can go to one third and one out of, you know, one fourth, which I'm not sure when you would use this, but it is kind of fun. Or you can just go back to normal if, Where's, there we go. Um, and I tend to leave it at 1x zoom or 2x zoom like that. So it's not quite all of the image on the screen, but it's pretty close. Now there is also setup. 
There's all sorts of things you can do to fine tune this experience and have it work just for you. So lots going on here. It comes with a quick start guide. It comes with an extensive user manual, which gives you a lot of information on all of its different features, including those inputs and outputs that you can explore. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just close it because I also want to show you that it's really just kind of a chunky laptop. And with a 15.6 inch screen, it really is the size of like a MacBook or a larger Windows PC computer. And it's a bit thick. And that's because of that DVD player, which is sort of this part in the center here. And otherwise, it has a bunch of feet to give you stability. And I haven't figured out yet. I think that they use the same mold for a different model because there's this side here, which looks like there should be some sort of output jack or something, but there's nothing on this side at all. And all the cables are on this side. And then finally, notice there are some lights that give you some status, but you can imagine like in a hotel room or something, that you can just have this on the bed with you and you can just be super comfy and not worried about like, oh, well, I brought a bunch of DVDs. How do I play them on a hotel television? The answer is you don't. So let me get out of the menu. Let's see if we go here maybe. And the one thing I will say is that, um, um, <laughs> There's a lot of menu buttons. Let's see, how do I get back to the original movie? I'm not sure how to get back to the movie's um, titles. This one? Oh, that looks like the right button. Um, so one thing I will say that I think was a bit of a design hiccup is that this in the front where it shows you those status lights is also the receiver for the remote control. So if you have it spun around, then your remote control isn't pointing at the receiver. So you saw that I was already sort of struggling trying to get it to point in the right direction. So that's an argument for you to watch it in this orientation with the display and all the controls in front. But that's probably going to give you better sound anyway, so there's really not a whole lot of problems there. Now, what else can I tell you about this is that um, comes with an 18 month warranty and like I said, remote control, all the different cables and power options, and it does have a battery and weight wise, it's actually lighter than you might expect. It's 5.8 pounds according to them, but it actually feels lighter than that. I think it'd be really, really easy. And I'm going to just go ahead and turn off the LCD, one of the handy features, and it'd be really easy to just tote this around. And what I would do is I would go buy an inexpensive laptop case or a laptop envelope style case and put it in that to give it a little protection. But you know, this is something obviously I'm easily able to tote it around. So you can imagine that if you have someone in your family or you, and you want to have all the flexibility of being able to go to somewhere like Walmart or Target and pick up DVDs for a buck a movie, and then be able to watch them. And it's a really nice looking screen. The sound's actually pretty decent for a couple of built-in speakers on a device like this. And of course, there's that 3.5 millimeter audio out. So you could plug it in to a different sound system or plug it into some nice headphones and get really nice sound there too. So there's really a lot to like. It's a surprisingly useful and flexible device. I'm actually pretty psyched to have this in my inventory of all of the different screens I have. So one worth checking out, especially if you have a backlog and a collection of DVDs, then this is like, oh, all of a sudden I can watch them again. So nice. Now, we should talk about the price because it's actually less expensive than you're going to expect. But before we get there, I'm going to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Just click on that subscribe button. Also tap on or click on the bell icon for notifications and give me a thumbs up if you found this to be useful. I hope you did. And then let's talk about this. This is the Navsk Auto 15.6 inch portable DVD player and it is $139.99 currently discounted down to $99.99 and then there's a $10 additional discount dropping it down to $89.99 at amazon.com. 
that is a pretty cool price for a DVD player that you can plug into a television or something, but that you can use to watch DVDs in the car, on the train, on a commute. You can use them in a hotel room. You know, you just have all these old DVDs if you're like me, and this just brings them all back to life. So lots to like here. And as for me, <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say. I need to get back to Buckaroo Banzai, so I'll catch you in my next video.